Hello there, Mark Cunningham here. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how you can set up your zero invoices so they closely match the branding of your business. And that will include adding a logo as well as some instructions on how to pay you. I use the Australian version of zero in this video, but it's pretty much the same process all around the world. So you can watch this video no matter where you're from. And if you'd like to learn more about zero, then check out the links to our courses in the description below. Okay, so over here in the Australian demo company, the place you need to go to is the main menu and settings, and then go to invoice settings. Okay, so over here in the demo company, there's actually a couple of invoice templates set up. One of them's called standard, one of them's called special projects, and then there's this other uh, special one down the bottom here called the very orange invoice. So if you're using the demo company, you'll see something like this, but if you're in your real business, you probably won't see all these set up. You might just have one set up. So in the demo company here, they've got a couple of them set up and that's just to show you um, how they work. So before we actually set up a new branding theme, I'll just show you a little bit about how they actually work. So I'll duplicate the screen and we'll go over into invoices. Okay, so we'll just go into any of our invoices. I'll just go into this one. Okay, so whenever you create an invoice, you will assign a branding theme to it and that will determine how it looks. So for this one here, if I click on preview, okay, we can see that it's using the branding theme that has that demo co as the logo there. So it's using that one, the standard one, but there will be other invoices in the system that don't look like this because they use this one instead. So you can have more than one branding theme going at any one time. Also, when you actually create an invoice, if you have multiple branding themes over here, the one that you actually have on top here, this will be your default one. So when you're creating an invoice, it will default to this one unless you specifically choose a different one. So that's just something to keep in mind. So if you actually create one of these and you want it to be the default one, you just need to grab this little thing here and just shift it up to the top. And I'm not sure if that's gonna quite do it. I might have to shift this one down like that. So now the special projects one is the default one. So if I, if I go to create an invoice, it will default to this one. So I'd actually have to specifically choose this one. All right. But chances are you'll probably only just have one branding theme anyway um, for your business. So you probably don't need to worry about that order too much, but I just thought I'd show you. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is show you how to create one and that will determine the look and feel um, of your invoices like we saw over here. Okay, so there's this new branding theme button at the top. There's actually a couple of different types. You can create a standard one or you can create this one where you can have a lot more flexibility, but you need to create a docx word file and um, it's a little bit more of a difficult process and that's what this one down here uses but we're not going to do that today we're just going to create a standard um, branding theme all right so we can click on that or we can just click on the button here okay and it's just taken us to this pop-up which is for a new branding theme so the first thing you need to do is give it a name and you can call it whatever you like so i'm just going to call it um, invoice template, just like that. And then as you can see, you've got quite a few things that you can do through here to um, set up the look and feel of it. But before we go through all that, I'll just show you something. If we just click on save, all right, and I'll just see if I can get our new one and just bring it up to the top. All right, it's a little bit hard to do that drag and drop sometimes. I just wanted to show you um, how you can get the logo in there straight away. So you can see here, there's an upload um, logo um, link or button there to press, or you can come to this options drop down, and you can click on upload logo. If you do upload a logo, you can actually replace it. So it's not in there permanently. So this one, for example, you can see it's got change logo. So don't worry if you upload one and then you want to change it later. So let's just upload it. I'll just click on this. And I'll just show you that it gives you this little write up here saying what size your um, JPEG, um, GIF or PNG file should be. 
it's got to be um, no more than 400 pixels wide and 120 pixels high. So just make sure that your logo fits into those specifications. All right, so I've created one. So I'll just click on browse and upload it. Okay, so there it is there. So now if we um, click on preview, I think we can actually preview it here. You can see there that we've got our logo at the top. Okay, so you can put that in first or you can put it in last if you like. You don't have to do it first like I did. I just thought I'd show you that right away. All right, so let's go in and edit it now. So we've already created it. So now we can just come over here and click on edit. All right, and we just get back to that same screen that I opened before. So we've already named it. So the next thing you can do is choose whether you want A4 or US letter. And then down here, you've got some margins that you can play with as well. And you can do it in centimeters or inches. I'm just going to leave that all the way it is. You've also got the choice of a couple of different fonts. There's not a whole lot of them there, but there's a few pretty good standard ones there. And then you've got your font size as well. So the next thing you've got down here is the um, titles of your invoice. So you've got the draft approved um, overdue um, invoices there. And that's when you actually go and create an invoice. I'll just see if, if I can hit preview here. Yeah, you see how that says tax invoice at the top. So that's coming from here. So that would be an approved invoice. It's probably not overdue um, yet, but that's what happens. So if you create an invoice and it's just a draft and it's saved here in zero and you go to preview it, it will say draft invoice at the top. So I might actually go and find one. If we go into drafts and we'll get that one and preview. And there it is at the top draft invoice. And you can see, because I've got that um, new template um, at the top now, it's kind of defaulted to that one as well, which is something to watch out for. All right, so if it's in draft status, it'll say that at the top. If it's approved, it'll say tax invoice. If it's overdue, it'll say tax invoice, but you can change this. So if it's overdue, you might actually want to type the word overdue in there like this. So when it's overdue and you send it to the client again, it will say overdue at the top. Similarly, if you're creating credit notes, that's just the title at the top. If you're sending out um, statements for invoices that are due, it'll say statement at the top. Um, you've also got the same thing here for purchase orders, whether they're drafts or whatever. You've got the same thing for quotes. You've got the same thing for remittance advice, and you've got the same thing for receipt. So these are all just headings. And if you wanna change them, you can go ahead and change them here just for your various documents there um, that you send to your customers. All right, so then down here, you've got a bunch of choices as to what you actually want to show. So if you tick on show tax number, for example, if I go back over here, I'll see if this one's actually got it. So in Australia, that's the ABN. So it's just showing um, the ABN there. And then it's all pretty straightforward. So you've got things like um, column headings, item codes, unit price and quantity. So you can see that's all over here, quantity, unit price. Um, it, it's got um, item code is unticked. So there's no item codes here. And then you've also got uh, the tax column, registered address, you've got the logo that we uploaded and you've got some options there for things like discounts, contact account number, etc. So you can play around with all that based on what information you want to show up on your um, invoices. All right, you've also got some tax settings here on how you want um, to show your tax subtotals. And then you've also got currency conversion over here. So if you're using multiple currencies, um, you've got a couple of little options there that you can play with as well. So down here, you've got these payment services. You've got credit card, PayPal, and bank payments. So this is the demo company. It doesn't have everything set up, but for this one here, if you actually set up so that your customers could click on a button when you email them the, the invoice and pay directly via Stripe. So if you've got Stripe and you set up Stripe in zero and you want them to pay with their credit cards directly into your Stripe account, um, you can set that up in zero and then you'll have the option to choose it here. And if you do, it will show up on their invoices. Same thing with PayPal. So here in the demo company, they've got a couple of weird looking fake um, PayPal accounts set up. I don't know why they've got two. But if you've got a, a PayPal account for your business, you can do the same thing here, set it up as a payment service 
and then hook it up here and your customers will be able to pay you directly via PayPal. And there's the same thing here for, for bank payments as well. So that's something that you can look into um, if you want your customers to be able to pay you quite easily. All right, so down here we've also got um, the terms and payment advice. And then you've got these terms for quotes as well. So this is just for quotes, not for invoices down here. And this is for invoices and statements. So if I come back over here, I don't think this has actually got anything in there. I'll go back, find another invoice. Okay, this has got it. So down the bottom here, when paying by check, please complete this payment advice, blah, blah, blah. And then there's online payment. So it's given a um, BSB and account number there, um, which would be sort code and account number if you're in the UK. And then just a little bit of text there. So this is just text that's been inserted at the bottom of the invoice and it comes from here. So if you want to type out some text telling people the best way to pay you, um, if you want to give a bank account number or if, if you accept checks and you want to tell them how to do it, this is where you write it. And then for quotes, if you send people quotes, this is just the terms of the quotes. So if you don't do quotes, you won't need to fill this out. And the terms are things like, um, you need to get back to us within seven days. This quote is only valid for seven days or something like that. Okay. So up the top here, we've also got logo alignment. So we've got left, center, and right. When I did the preview, the, the logo was on the right hand side, but if you want it to be in the left or the center, you can choose it there. And then you've got taxes, whether they're inclusive or exclusive um, of GST or VAT or whatever you've got in your country for sales tax. So these are all things you just need to muck around with and just find out what works best for you. Also, you've got enter your contact details as they should appear at the top of all your PDFs. So you can write in your contact details there and that's it. So if we just click on save, Okay, we now have um, this invoice template or this branding theme that we've called invoice template and that's our default template now. Okay, so like we saw before, you've got some options down here. You can go back in and edit it. You can copy it to a new one. You can change the logo. You can delete it if you don't want it anymore. You can preview it here or you can just remove the logo. So there's a few things to do there. I'll also just show you, if I go back into edit, this section here with the payment services for PayPal and Stripe, etc. If you want to set that up, you go here to payment services. Okay, so you can go down here and you can set up Stripe, for example, to do the bit with the credit cards and you can set up PayPal and you can set up um, other things as well. So I'm not doing that here because I've got different videos on that. So you can have a look um, for my different videos. And once you've got them set up here, like I showed you, then they flow through to here and you can just choose them here. Okay, so that's how you set it up. So what I'll do, I'll go back over to invoices and we'll get out of that and go back to invoices and we'll just click on new invoice. Okay, so you can go ahead and create an invoice and I'm just showing you here where you choose your branding theme is right here. And you can see we've got invoice template, which is the one we just set up. And then you've got the other ones down here and you can see they're all in the same order actually as what we had on the other page. So it defaults to invoice template because that's the one um, that we've got on top. If we click on that and hit preview, there's obviously not, not much in it, but you can see how that's come up with the, um, with the logo there. Okay, and that's how you do it. And it's the same sort of thing if I go back and we go into quotes and we go new quote. And you can see there, there's branding themes here as well. And you can choose the branding theme there and just preview it and everything like we saw before. Okay, so that's how you can put your own branding on your invoices and a few other documents in Xero.